this formation is called a lion's tail and it's or cave popcorn on the very end of that it's calcite that's forming on the end of the stalactite this pillar here is 62 feet tall the one next to it is 58 feet tall in the car after a day in Carlsbad Caverns. It is super windy out here. However, no wind underground. So it was a great day down in the cavern. We did a tour called the King's Palace Tour. Uh, amazing, amazing rock formation. If you don't have a bucket list, make one and put this at the top. It is that amazing. Uh, and we would hope that everybody gets an opportunity to see this. And I'd spend uh, several days here. We spent two days, not enough time. There are a number of tours that you can take. There are some that are for the more, uh, more in shape type of person. Um, somebody who's a little more physically active probably than I am. And uh, that's unfortunate that for me, but I would actually encourage you to take some of these uh, additional tours they have here. They do cost a little bit of money for the tours. Um, for the King's Palace tour, it was eight bucks um, for me to go on that. Barb was half price because she had the senior pass. And uh, so overall, well worth the money. Uh, they have a Spider-Man tour, or what they call the Spider Cave. A little bit more crawling on that one. And uh, they have some, just called the Left Cave, where you go in with uh, candles inside the little candle holders. And uh, I think that's the only, the only light that they have there. The tours that we all did today, down paved trails with, with guardrails. Uh, so it's, you're not going to go off the trail, and you shouldn't anyway. Uh, the other guided tours, they're not on paved trails, but they're well-defined trails. And so you'd probably want a little sturdier shoe for those. But overall, what we did here in the two days that we were here, um, not bad at all as far as being able to walk through the caves and see amazing sights. So, beautiful. Well, I really haven't been doing a lot of recording uh, of the tour or, I mean, of the, uh, of the drive. It's been pretty flat, but now here we are in Durango, Colorado. We're going to a welcome center so we can find out what the tours are like for Mesa Verde archaeological site. So we want to head up there on Wednesday and uh, and so we're coming in here to get tickets. Uh, this is a really nice little town. If you haven't been to Durango before, it is a nice little town here in Colorado. We are staying in a place called Aztec, New Mexico, which is about 43 minutes down the road. So a little bit of driving for us to do this tour. You know, it's always such a hard time finding places to eat. 
search, but I think I found a place. What's up with that? Okay, can you guess where Barb is? Once again, we had to stop. Well, the store moved, but somehow Barb still found it. Now, it's operated out of this little house. Aztec ruins. This has nothing to do with the Aztecs. It's the Puebloian people. And we're going to go ahead and walk through their gathering places and some of their rooms. Uh, this particular site was built in 35 years. So that's really, really fast compared to some of the other sites they built that took hundreds of years. And there's no really understanding of why they built this so fast. Um, it must have been an important site. So let's go take a look at uh, some of the rooms here at the Aztec ruins in Aztec, New Mexico. The Puebloans were just a short people, but uh, these doors that they came through, and you can see one behind me here, and this door actually only comes up to about my waist. So it's uh, pretty tight getting in here.
There are a number of these round kias, I think is what they're called. And these were the gathering places. And so it's either, I don't know, a giant living room or for ceremonial purposes, but there's a number of them here. So there's, you can see two right there. And then it looks like these are rooms in here. You can also see some of the construction techniques. We saw it a little bit with some of the pillars in the big Kiev. But here you can see some of the original wood that was used uh, for structural support along with these rocks. Here at the Ruins Road RV Park, we are really nice and close to the ruins. And so we'll show some pictures up there. Now this park itself was $30 a night. And there are really no amenities here other than full hookups. We also have a very strong Wi-Fi and strong 4G. So it's, um, it's at the top of the range of what I like to pay for an RV site. I know I've paid more expensive in other places but those places had a lot better amenities. Um, so for no amenities, other than being close to the, um, to the ruins, this is, uh, this is all right. And like a lot of the RV parks here, there's people who just passing through and there are some people who live here as well. The sites themselves are spaced far enough apart. I mean, there's not a lot of privacy in these spots, but at least you're not right on top of your neighbor. about to go on a ranger guided tour of the Cliff Palace. These are dwellings where the Pueblian people lived from the year about 850 AD to about the year 1300. Nobody really knows why they left. Um, probably because along that time, or late 1200s, early 1300s, they're in the midst of a 23 year drought. So that could be a good reason. We also saw a lot of fire damage on the way in. Now one thing cool about the fires is that it uncovered more of the cliff dwellings. But uh, I bet they had fires back then too. So down here is where we're going to start our tour. We're at about 7,000 feet elevation up here, so the air is kind of thin. They say this is a strenuous tour, so we'll see how strenuous that is. Uh, I know there's some ladder climbing involved and some steep trails, so I'm sure that takes it out into account. But uh, right over here, Right there is where the trail starts. Well, just before we started the tour, the ranger showed up and said, hey, 
we can't go that way. We have to go a different way. There's a big rock with a crack in it, and they feel that it's unsafe. So we're going to do the tour backwards. So instead of walking the path to the palace, we're going to take the ladders down into the palace, and then I assume climb the ladders back out. So it's not a loop. It's a one-way thing. The elevation here is killer. So if you're not used to it, it's easy to get out of breath. So after touring the uh, Cliff Palace, we've decided to take this little walk down to an overlook that looks at the balcony house. You can't walk down to the balcony house, but they do have an overlook. So it's a real easy trail. It's a little over a mile walk. It takes you about 40 minutes for a round trip. So super easy. And uh, maybe you get to see a cool dwelling at the same time. So we're going to go ahead and head over there. Mm -hmm. 